Hey, I'm back. Had a good night's sleep. Had a day of work to think about everything. And I concluded that I'm going to start over. So I basically forfeited the uh, last match. And the uh, primary reckoning there was I had a lot of damaged ships or planes. And they were going to cost me a lot of research points. But I had no ability to get research points because the wave of the Warsaw Pact was already moving, and the primary way you get Warsaw, you get points is by pushing them back. And so I felt like I was in this just downward spire, spiral. Um, so that's one of my initial conclusions of this game, is that if you fall behind, uh, you may not be able to catch back up. That's, I think, one of the things about this, and I could be wrong, but I mean, from my first impression, that's one of them. The other one, um, I was asked on a forum to explain how I felt. And I said that this game is a puzzle that has one solution. And it may not have been fair of me to say, <clears throat> but that's what I said. Um, the reason I say that is because... A game, the difference between a puzzle and a game to me is a puzzle is something you solve and a game is something you play. Now, what's the difference between this? What are my opening game moves? You tell me. What should I do in my opening game moves? It's very clear and evident that there's only one opening game move, and that is to move these two tracks up. And if you tell me that, no, 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 you could go after objectives, I'll tell you you're wrong. There's not enough planes here to do those first two objectives we drew. None. It was impossible to do those two objectives we drew at the opening of the last game. Absolutely impossible. You're 100% wrong if you think that we can go after objectives from the start. <clears throat> and so is it possible we can get lucky with the objective cards? I guess so. Then maybe then we could do something else, but that's not an opening game move. That's taking advantage of some, some bizarre luck. So the proper opening game move is we have to double up our planes so we don't get shot down, right? And so we're going to have to spend five just to do basic missions. And that's going to be the opening game move every single time you play this game. There's no other opening game move available to you. So that's what I mean by there's only one solution. Uh, a game, so let's take Charlemagne, for example. I, opening game, I went after the Lombardi trophy right away, but I could have just as easily done something else. And I think it would have still worked out. You know, it just would have been a different sequence. Um, of course, you need to build those, those churches early. Of course, you need to get another marquee early. I mean, there are certain things you have to do early. In this one, what you need to do early is the OCA and dead track you need to go up. And uh, and maybe, you know, I'm being a little unfair by saying that it's just one solution to a puzzle. Uh, because maybe this is no different than any other game where you have to do certain things early. I just think that this is the only thing you're going to do early every time. Um, so that's that was my gripe about it. And I don't know, maybe it's unfair of me, but... But I, I really strongly feel that way. I mean, I don't think that there's any other... So now here's what I did wrong. I played my PGMs awful. I did not... I was not smart about using these. And I think if I'm smart about using these, I will really change the course of the first couple turns. And I will change them in my favor. And so I think that this single-handedly put me behind the eight ball. So as much as I'm griping and complaining... It was my own poor decision-making because I was inexperienced with the game that I think put me in that situation. Now, I also think, <clears throat> after a day of thinking about it, I just had really bad luck. I, I think that many of you could probably report that you've been able to do missions and not get shot down as much as and often as I have. And, um, and I, maybe in the next four playthroughs, I wouldn't get shot down quite as bad. But let me put it in perspective. <clears throat> that last, that first playthrough, 
We played three turns. You tell me one decision that I made over the course of three turns, which is one third of the entire game. You tell me what one decision I made that impacted the outcome of the game. And I know I have the advantage of nobody's actually there to respond, but I'm telling you, there weren't any. I missed, my raids failed 100% in the first round, except for the decap. In the second round, I think they also failed. <laughs> I think they all failed but one. And then in the third round, I finally started to get some success. I got this dead number to move up one space, and then at the end of the round, it went right back. So there was not one single accomplishment that my raids did to impact the game. Now, this front line here is a really cool concept. I love it. But these things moved because they wanted to move. And if they failed to move, it's just because I got lucky with the cards. I made no decisions that impacted the front lines. There was a few times I was able to reinforce a few troops. And I will talk about that in a second, because I think there's a way to be even smarter about what I did there. But that's my frustration with this right now, is I feel like I am just here for a ride, and I'm not actually making meaningful decisions. And so that's where I'm getting upset. I mean, if my raids were actually causing some form of damage or something, I mean, I, I'm just not... That's, that's where I'm at. So I'm hoping that if I can use these PGMs better, um, that I will start to make an impact. And here's, here's where I'm, my mind is. I am accepting the fact that the first couple turns, I'm not going to impact the war. The war is going to take me for a ride. I think that's how the game is designed, is it's taking you for a ride. These guys got up to eight strength in like nothing flat. And I think... There's nothing I can do to stop that. And here's why. Those cards are going to say whatever they say. And some of them say as high as three or four points is going to be added to each one of these. What am I going to do to stop that? Oh, I can do a FUFA mission, but I have to succeed at a surveillance first. And you saw that over the course of three turns, I never once succeeded at that. So you can't bank on it. You can't bank that you're going to get a FUFA mission. And even if you did have a FOFA mission, every hit just reduces the reinforcements by one. If they're getting four reinforcements and you only get one hit on them, uh, yippity do. I mean, you're going to reduce it to three instead of four. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. So um, I don't think that that is a viable strategy. I think you have to accept the fact that the Warsaw Pact is going to shoot up to eight and you need to figure out how to bounce back an eight. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So how do, we, how do we do that? Well, at some point, we got to get the OCA and dead track to the top. Because when they're at the top, we get extra research points. We already talked about that. And so research points are king, because that allows us to repair our planes, blah, 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 and get pilots. And so that helps you to mitigate with some of the luck. Um, the other thing is, if you see this, that's five points towards ground combat. That's an automatic hit when you resolve ground anything. And, well, actually, it's it, for the seed, it actually helps with the seed. It doesn't help with your ground combat. But the point is, is that it, um, and actually, I'll have to check. Maybe it does help with ground combat. But, but anyways, the point of this is uh, you can then put more planes on the primary mission and less on the actual side mission, right? That's what I'm trying to get at. And then here, look at this, that's a seven. So I can just put a crappy three plane and I, I'm basically uh, protecting against anything. You know, and so there's no air intercepts ever happening on me if I can get this up to seven. I mean, it's very clear that this is your strength in the game. And once you get these high, then all those planes you were doubling up here and here can now be used to do additional raids, right? So uh, there's nine possible raids out there in addition to the other stuff. And we were doing at most, what, two? So we have seven more that we could have added if we don't have to spend so many points on these two fields, right? 
So the idea is, is even if FOFA is not allowed, uh, this close air support uh, applies hits, which get added to this. And so if this sucker gets up to eight, like it, like it will, uh, we can pound the crap out of it. And they said we can target one single spot three times. So we could possibly do as much as nine damage. Well, actually it's capped out at eight, but we can do as much as eight damage to that thing. And if we double it, we knock it back twice and, you know, and all this other stuff. I mean, so there's, there's things we can do to make a difference in this game, but it's later. <clears throat> in the early game, it's a single puzzle with a single solution. And that's what I was meaning. I don't see any other way to get a hold of this game. You have to get these up. That is the only option. And once you get these up, then everything else you can start to control. And then you're, then the rest of it's just managing the line and you can focus on, on taking out the line, okay? I hope that makes some sense. That's where my mind is. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts. I, I don't see any other plan. Now, with that being said, um, you saw me in my first one. I, I was putting just one unit here and here and I was trying to like do six raids at once. I was actually trying to do that objective that lets you do seven raids, right? So I'm not gonna do that. I have to double up. I have to put doubles on here and here so I don't get shot down. And then the PGMs need to go on my primary so that way this goes up by more than one. So even if at the end of the round it goes back backwards one space, I need to at least go up a minimum of two spaces. So I'm always making positive ground. That's what I'm trying to do. And if I can always make positive ground, then the rest will play itself out. <clears throat> and it'll take me probably half the 10 turn game to get this dead track and OCA track up to where it needs to be. And that's the part I'm very concerned about. Now, <clears throat> this, I told you I would get back to this. What I was doing with my reinforcements is I would look at this, I'd see a five, I'd see a four here, and I'm like, oop, I'm gonna reinforce this, so that way uh, I keep up with the Joneses. What I think I need to do instead is I need to target going up to eight. And so I wanna look at this. So for example, uh, here there's a four just as strong as that four. So maybe I should be putting points in this one and let this one fight Warsaw for as long as it can. And then when it loses, I, in the meantime, I've been bumping this one up. So that way we finally got our eight points we need to beat them back. You know, that's the idea. Um, so maybe you just, you know, you concede ground, right? We decide, okay, I'm okay with conceding ground until here. And then this is where the line gets drawn. The problem is, is I'm only getting like three points. So how do I divide three points amongst, you know, six different lines and, it's just, it's really challenging. And um, I have to pick certain lines that I'm just not gonna reinforce. And we actually did a good job of beating this one back. And uh, that's good. Uh, this is of course our big city. So we need to hold our ground here. And you can see this is pretty weak. <clears throat> um, we don't have a big city in this line. So maybe I let it go, right? He gets four points from us, yippee do. You know, here is a big city. So we wanna hold this line. This one's a big city and there's several spots we can maybe make a line. And then of course the top one as well. So that's the idea that's going through my head. I still think there's some improvement I can make there. So what I'm trying to say overall is I definitely made some tactical poor choices uh, by uh, not protecting. I needed to escort and, and do ground support stronger. I, I thought that, see, and the other thing is, is I don't play these games before I record. So I'm looking here and look, I see really low numbers there. And I'm thinking, you know what? There's a good chance I'm gonna get low numbers, but there's a lot of high numbers in here. And, and that's the thing that I have to accept is that there's too many high numbers in this deck. So I can't just say, hey, a seven is good enough. I thought a seven was good enough. Like if I'm gonna do air support and I have a seven, I thought that was awesome. It's not awesome. It's not good enough. So I need to have air support that is basically at 10 or better every time. Uh, a seven is risky. It's very, very risky. I, I think there's a large number of cards that are seven or higher. So um, same with uh, you know the ground support and everything else. So if I really want 
to use my PGMs and I really want to do some damage, I have to get smart and use the PGMs and then guarantee that that PGM will actually hit its target. Um, and so I can't just, you know, send them off on a mission and then have them get shot down before the mission even starts. And that was a huge mistake on my part. So uh, I'm not saying that the game stinks. I, I am thinking that there's only one way to play this game at the start. I mean, I'm, I'm not disagreeing that there might be some more options later, uh, but at the start, it feels like it's gonna start the same every time. Uh, and you know what? That was the same criticism of D-Day Omaha Beach, which I told you I loved. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I think the only thing that left me sour with this is, is that other comment I made about I'm, I'm truly not feeling like my decisions make matter. And I do have to feel like my decisions matter. There's an ego I have when I play board games. <laughs> if my decisions don't matter, I no longer want to play. Um, and I did not feel they mattered that last game. So let's see if they matter this game and go ahead and get started. I have it all set up. Um, I'm gonna draw our two objective cards and you can see they want four close air support hits in Delta and five successful air support raids to be conducted this turn. So, um, so there you go. This is impossible. Impossible to do five. We're not gonna be able to do it. So what's gonna happen? Um, we lose one RP, we lose two RP, so we're just gonna accept the fact that we're gonna lose RP this turn. That's it. And I, I have to not get lured by the, you know, hey, I wanna do objectives. Screw the objectives. There's no way I can do five. So that's what I have to accept in this game, is that at the start of the game, you ignore your objectives, which seems silly to me, but that's what you gotta do. One, two, three, four, five. Just to prove my point, I'm just gonna randomly pick three planes. And this is assuming I pass every test. And this one, we're gonna say he can do his own mission. One, two, three, four, five. Then I have three planes left over. So that means I get to double up three spots. Do you know, how unsuccessful this is going to be? Extremely unsuccessful. There is no way that's going to succeed. None. None at all. And I know I randomly put them out there, and yes, I, could, I would flip them around to make sure we had the right values. Like, this is a 6, right? So you would think a 6 can pass. No, it won't. No, it won't. <laughs> I mean, and it's not just pass once. I have to pass twice. I have to pass this one and then pass that one. So that means I have to draw two cards that don't go over a six or a five. Look at that, eight, eight, nine, nine. I just drew two. Screw that. You see that? That's, and this was a shuffled deck. I just drew the top two cards of that shuffled deck and, and I just lost. Two checks in a row. There is no way to do objectives at the start of the game. It's impossible. And if somebody thinks it's possible, the only way you're going to convince me is you're going to play it and, and, uh, and record it and not pre-construct the desk, deck to, to try to manipulate the game. Um, and that's the thing. If you pre-construct the deck, sure, I can see you pulling it off. But it's not going to happen. So here I am shuffling again. Those were two awful cards, by the way. <laughs> All right, so let's go back. Let's go back and let's do our strategy. And I'm looking at the turn order. And, uh, okay, we received our objectives. Now we gotta do recon. So let's see if we can do a decap mission. And remember, it's five or lower. And we got the five. We actually succeeded. So decap is available. So next we go to... Let's do the event one. And there's a six we failed. So we don't get to manage the event in the game. That's sort of unfortunate. I was really hoping to get the event in too, but um, okay, so the raids are done. I'm sorry, recon, I mean. And now we do our air planning phase. So here's what I'm gonna do differently. I am gonna try to make it so we automatically succeed. That part is, is a no-brainer. So here you got a six. 
And yes, I can add a four, so that makes it a 10, right? And then this needs to be a ground combat. And we need strike for here, so uh, that's a really good strike value. And, and I did set up the game, but I just wanna make sure that I really do have that one. Yes, I do, I do. Um, so this is a really good strike one, and I'm gonna put it on the dead, for example. And um, and then this, uh, I'm gonna put on the OCA. So we're gonna OCA with the Stealth Bomber. And then this one, here you go, there's a seven. And, oh, this is a really nice one uh, with a seven. It even has a six. This is a super nice one, way to go Brits. Um, excuse me, so we're gonna do that. And here you can see that makes it a 10. But you know what, I'm gonna make it an 11. We're not even gonna draw a check. We're gonna auto pass this sucker. We need to auto pass these things. So uh, that puts us at a 10. I'm gonna make it 11. And here, I got a five. And... This needs to be, what does decap? Decap, I think, is a strike, right? Yes, it uses strike value, which is the third number. But you know what, we only need one hit, who cares? So I'll just throw that in. And that'll get us to a 10. That's the best I can do is a 10. So I do have extra planes left, right? So maybe I can do one more mission. So let's do a close air support against something. I think we decided we wanted to protect Frankfurt or Hanover. Um, which one do we want to protect over here? Uh, this is a big one with very low numbers. So let's go after um, uh, Echo here. And uh, I'm not gonna worry about, because I'm not gonna get either of the objectives. So if I go after Echo, and I put a 10 there, and then a five and a four is nine for ground combat, and then I can do that. So I can at least get one mission in. Um, so is there anything I can do moving things around? I'm looking. This one is a five, so I can put both of those there to make it a 10 and put that one there. So there you go. I think we can do something like this. And we're pretty much guaranteeing everything. If I draw a 10 in some spots, I will fail. So let's just give you that caveat. So where would I fail? This is an 11, auto pass, 11, auto pass. That's a 10, so that's gonna be a critical check. And I'm actually nervous about getting a 10 when there's a possibility of one through 10 in the deck. And look at how nervous I am. <laughs> um, this one is an 11, auto pass. This is a 10, and this is a 10. So um, that's where we're at. And of course, if I draw a 10 with this one, I fail too. So uh, the 10s could still get me. Um, so let's get this show on the road. Uh, I do want to start with the decap strike. Uh, or do I? You know what? I'm going to start with the OCA strike. So as long as I don't draw a 10, we're going to be good. So here we go. All right. That was a good roll or good draw. Okay. So our stealth. Oh, 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 crap. I know, I forgot, I forgot, and please forgive me. I was gonna use PGMs. So this one is a PGM, just to be clear. And then we're gonna use a PGM on this one, for sure. Um, so PGM on those two, okay? So I'm using two of them. And I know I already know the outcome, but I apologize, that was the whole strategy, right? Is we were gonna make these count. So this is two hits on OCA. So we go up two spots, on, and now we have a value of one for the rest of the mission, because those occur immediately. So this PGM's out. 
And so now we go do the dead. And see, this is a 10, but now we get a plus one, so it's an auto pass. And then this is a 11, so it's an auto pass. So I'm not gonna draw cards for either of those. That's auto passes. So we hit here, and this hits for three, because that's a 16 uh, when we double it, and that does three hits. These eights are awesome. So um, the dead track is already, I'm already higher up on both of these tracks than I was the entire last game. So I'm fully confessing to you that that was the mistake I made. You have to do this. But that's what I'm also trying to say is you have to do this. So in terms of a puzzle perspective, there's one solution. There is no other solution. This is it. So anyways, uh, we actually have a one to our ground combat now. And so if you look around, this was an 11, that's an 11, that's a 10 plus one is 11, and this is a 10 and now plus one is 11. We've succeeded at all of our missions, okay? So by getting those dead no CA tracks up, we just made it so we succeeded everything without having to draw any cards. So this is just gonna be a single hit on, and I was supposed to put this out, but I told you it was gonna be on Echo. So we did a single hit on Echo. Not a big deal, but it was at least something. And um, we did a decap strike. So now I'm gonna draw, go find a 10 here. We're gonna get rid of one of these 10 10s. And, uh, because we don't like them. Those 10 tens can blow it. All right, I found two of them, by the way, but I know that there's some that have a zero NATO reinforcement, and so I was trying to find those, and I never found them. Um, so, this one is now out of the game. And see, that's a five reinforcement. Holy cow, that is just an awful card. So we got rid of it. So now I got to shuffle. Um, so there you go. Uh, compared to the last game, I just now succeeded at 100% of my missions. Now, have I changed the outcome of the game yet? No, no I haven't. But I think that's what you got to do. Mentally, you have to understand that this is like a, a momentum game. And so you have to slowly build your momentum up. And over time, you'll be able to start doing things. So my objective wasn't even to do a, a raid like I did there, but I was able to do one anyways because I had enough extra planes. And if I get to a point where I don't have to double up my planes here, um, I'll be able to really do some damage. Uh, okay, so next thing that's important to point out is um, uh, just a reminder, you're limited to five planes per raid. So that's the reason why I couldn't like do more damage like you can move the dead no ca up potentially three points if you were able to do it um but i couldn't so uh anyways i'm done with my shuffling uh we're done with our raid resolution uh we lose two um plus four we lose six one two three four five six rp uh, we actually did succeed at doing one close air support raid so that's why we only lost four for this one Okay, so um, so we're there, now we go to the ground combat. And this one, of course, is a crapshoot. Um, but we did really well last time when we did this. And there you can see it's a three versus a four. And we got a five, holy cow, that was an eight versus a four. That's a double. So with a double, they lose one cohesion and, cohesion and then retreats. And if it's in the starting space, it's gonna lose two cohesion. So this one just took two hits. That's pretty awesome. Um, that's an even better start than last time. Okay, so let's get another five. Uh, here we only got a one. So we tied, and so we lost Hanover already. That is worse than the last one. And they just scored two points. A tie is not good enough, folks. And here, uh, I got a four, so that's an eight to a five. Uh, they lose one. And then here, we got a zero. Five to four, we lose, and he moves in. No victory points for him, though. And then here, we got a three. Uh, five to three, he loses one. 
Actually, this is another one, right? So that would have been six to three, so he loses two. So we knocked them all the way back to one. So that close air support actually did make a difference. So yes, I made a decision that impacted this game. <laughs> all right, and then here uh, I do a one and I actually lost. So they've already advanced here and they score two more points. They're already up to four points and our research points is even worse than it was the first game. Okay, so now we go to the reinforcement phase. And we draw these cards and resolve them. So five reinforcements. So this three just shot, or this two shot all the way up to a seven. Ridiculous. Five reinforcements. So this is now all of a sudden an eight. Four reinforcements. We got another eight. So by the end of turn one, the Warsaw Pact is already full strength and three lanes. Two reinforcements. He's up to seven. Three reinforcements. He's up to four. And four reinforcements. He's up to seven. So, uh, no rest for the wicked there. Okay, so we did the reinforcements. And then we get to put our air reinforcements in the basing box. So uh, here's our air reinforcements uh, over here. This is, these are the guys that are coming out. I mistakenly uh, read this line and thought that that was when we returned our planes from the raids. And then, of course, you saw me trying to spend research points on somebody that was already damaged. But anyways, these guys are all now joining us. Excuse me. So um, there's some really nice ones in here. Um, I find it interesting because double some of these is just under 15. So you can't quite get three hits with some of these, but this one's the only one. Um, so he's special. But uh, anyways, we're moving on. We are done with reinforcements. So next up is um, the random event phase. So let's see what happens. No effect, we'll take it. And then um, we go to the resource phase. So we get one RP for every one that's in the starting box. So one, two, three, Three. So we get three RP for that. One, two, three. Then we get one for every major city. We know that that's four. One, two, three, four. And that's it. We have plus one RP at the end of this round. Uh, not a thing we can spend that on. So um, it's very critical that you don't take damage. Uh, I'm going to mention that uh, probably a hundred times. But if you take damage, you fall into that vicious cycle of of falling behind. Um, not until you can get the RPs consistently up here. Then it's okay to take damage. Um, okay. And I've already shown that if you take damage, you can put them on the OEW Escort because the damage guys don't take damage. So that's also a possible. But if you're taking damage, it means you fail to raid. <laughs> All right, I'm shutting up now. Um, moving on to turn end phase. Okay, so the air mission display strength step. Full strength, go to the basing box. So basically we get all of our planes back. And I know I'm taking up all the boxes, but just understand every plane is fully healthy. So um, there's no worries there. That comes off. Uh, then we have to do uh, a draw for each of these. And if I draw an even, they go backwards. So we're gonna do the dead track first. And I drew an odd. It's the air intercept, right? I'm checking. Yes. So uh, we got lucky. The dead track did not go backwards. And then let's go to the OCA. The OCA one does lose a step. So it goes back one. But it's still a one, which was very helpful last turn. And we're starting turn two with a one. Um, 
And then the, the scoring checks, there's no nuclear war because they're not over 20. And there's no um, Warsaw Pact that made it all the way to the end. So that was already a better turn one. So uh, now we go to turn two. And we start over. So first thing we do is recon. And uh, I still want to get that decap strike going. So let's start with that one. And I already failed. So we're not even going to get a decap on this one. That hurts. Um, but I guess it frees up planes for other missions. Oh, we were supposed to draw our objective cards. Sorry. The objectives are two close air support in Foxtrot and then four close air support hits in Charlie. So I need to get six hits in Foxtrot and Charlie. That's a tall order. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do it, but maybe we can try, because I'm gonna have extra planes. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so we wanna do OCA and dead. I like the stealth bomber on the OCA. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a PGM and make it double. And then we have another strike bomber. This guy is awesome. We're gonna use a PGM with him and we're down to one PGM left. Um, but that one will do three hits. If he gets through, this one will do two hits. Um, so now it's a matter of, we got all these reinforcements now and we have a one here on the uh, OCA track. Uh, we could, put two of them here, and then this would temporarily go up one more spot. Uh, I think I like that idea, so I'm gonna do that. I just haven't figured out which two is gonna be yet, but we'll do two of them. And the other thing is, if I can get this to go up one more, um, which the Stealth Bomber would do, uh, I'm gonna be at a two. So I'm going to assume that I have a two for this mission. So if I can just get all my planes up to like eight or nine, then the plus two will get me to my 10 or 11, right? So um, for example, this one is an eight. So I can put it here and that might be enough for that mission to succeed. Uh, although I really do want this one to succeed. So I can put two planes on this one. So if I do a five, I'm just looking at my options here. You know what, let's just do two fives, make it a 10. I know that's a little bit overkill, but this one I don't want to fail. So then, uh, I'm sorry, I need to move those to here, and this guy's there. Okay, so I want this to succeed too. I already have a plus one. So for example, if I put him on the mission, uh, I'm going to have an 8 for the mission, and then a plus 1 would be 9. Uh, that's actually really good. Um, do I want to put him on that is the question. And my answer is no. I'm just going to put a 4 and a 5 to get 9, and then the plus 1 will be 10. This is actually going to go up 2. So I'm going to be able to add 2, assuming the Stealth Bomber succeeds, right? So uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So I put it at a nine, that'll make it an 11. This is an auto, so they're both auto pass. Um, oh, that's for the dead track. Never mind. I'm only gonna, okay. This one is in jeopardy. Oh, I need to make sure this succeeds. I'm just trying to work out what's the best combination. There, that'll guarantee it succeeds. Okay, so we have a 10 here and a 10 there. So now I actually do have the ability to do some serious hitting. Uh, so it says I need to have two hits in Foxtrot and four in Charlie. So let's try to at least get Foxtrot, right? Foxtrot actually advanced on us. So getting two hits on them. Oh, I forgot to do a reinforcement for us. I don't know where that is, and why don't I, why do I keep missing that? Okay, so the first thing it says you're supposed to do 
is draw their reinforcements first. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we draw ours. And you can see NATO reinforces seven. Okay, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, so seven. Where do we want to make our stand? Uh, we have a seven and an eight and an eight and a seven and a seven. So these are our big threats. This one is also a potential threat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump this one up by two because I think we're at least equal to them. So that's two of my seven. I have five more. And uh, I'm going to bump Castle by five and now he's up to eight. So we're gonna make a hard stand there. Um, and then that'll protect one of our big cities. Okay, so, yes, I keep forgetting to do that and I don't know why. I need to make sure wherever my reinforce is, Yeah, I even have it written down. I just skipped right over it. Okay, so um, let's get let's get cracking here. We got Foxtrot, and then we're thinking of uh, if we have the ability, we're gonna go after Charlie. Charlie could really use the help. So if we did four hits on Charlie, that actually would be nice. But it's all gonna depend on our our uh, planes here. So for example, this is a seven, which is nice, but that's just one hit. So if I put that there and say, okay, this is going to go on Charlie. I need at least two or three hits. So let's say I can do two hits on Charlie. That seven needs to be at least a 10. So then I would... I can just add anything with a three, really. I mean, this one's actually really good, but he's a strike. You see that seven is a strike. I don't have any more strike missions, so I can, you know, make that a 10, right? So that would be two hits on Charlie. And then I would need this for air escort, and I'm looking at adding two, so that would only be an eight. So we're running a risk of really not doing well. And then the bigger issue is my ground combat guys are getting pretty weak. So, I can put two there, and that would give me an eight. So, uh, I'm running a risk that I can't do it. And, and see, this is where it's getting bad, is, uh, well, actually, I can do this. That's a little better. Um, so, there's five. There's seven. There's ten, again, for two hits. So this would be both for Charlie. And so then I still need some points here, so there's nine points there. And now remember, I'm going to put two in the OEW. So I'm going to choose this one and this one. Nope, I'm going to choose both of these guys and put them in the OEW. Okay? So now I gotta be able to do two hits on Sector Foxtrot. So if we make this one the Foxtrot mission, can I get two hits in? That's the first question. This is five plus four is nine, it's not two. So is there a way I can reshuffle things here? I'm not sure there is. Because here is a seven plus three. I'm pretty sure the dead trap does not add to uh, your close air support. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it doesn't add to close air support. It just adds to your ability to get to the target. Yeah, so uh, I need to get over 10. So that means somebody, like even this guy, like this is a seven plus a four would be 11. Ugh, didn't mean to do that. So now I got my two hits there. And this is now in jeopardy, right? So I put this up to an eight. I'm no longer guaranteed. I would make this a nine. So this is now a potential weak spot. But then I do this for a six and look at this. I got a three doing that one. <laughs> oh, is that really, uh, a three is awful. How am I gonna succeed? I'm just gonna get a plane shot down or damaged if I do that. So that's the, uh, the problem I'm running into. I, I almost have enough planes, but I don't. You see what I mean? Uh, is there a way I can just manipulate them one other smidgen? This I need for the eight. That's an eight, that's an eight. That puts me to a nine. I mean, I could make that a four, which makes that a little better, but ugh, that's not good. Yeah, it's just not quite. The other thing I can do is not do the OEW Escort, uh, but that doesn't help as much as you think because those planes are 5-2-2. Um, so here's the question. I mean, do I risk this? I mean, that could very likely fail. It's only got a four strength. I'm adding one and possibly two. If I succeed in my mission, I'm going to be adding two. So that'll be a six. I mean, that's no worse than, I guess, a raid, a reconnaissance check, right? Reconnaissance checks do sometimes pass. Uh, well, it's like they say, go big or go home, right? So let's see if we can pull this off. Maybe we'll try to get both of our objectives done. I'm really worried about it, but uh, let's go. Okay, so we finished the, now we do raid resolution. So uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Stealth Bomber. And remember we can't have a 10 in either spot and boy, I would have loved that for the other check. So that's a wonderful check. And he passes, PGM is used. We do two hits on the OCA and it bumps up to two. One, two, and of course the OEW made it go up one more because uh, it was here, it moved up to there, and then two more. Okay, so uh, Stealth Bomber did its job. So now with two more, this becomes an eight, and every this is a ten, that's a ten. This is an auto pass, and this is a nine. So we do run a risk with this one. Uh, however, the ground defense is only a two, so we get lucky again. And then this one does three hits, which is what the PGM helps us to do. And one, two, three now adds two more to all of our ground combat. So uh, that's uh, doing its job. So let's try the Charlie first. Um, this is a 10. So as long as I don't draw a 10, ooh, whoo, that was close. <laughs> so we do pass, and then this is an eight plus two is also a 10. And oh my gosh, that's another really high one. <laughs> so, um, but we pass. We actually passed, folks. And then this we made sure it was two hits. So we're gonna put two hits on Delta. And that was raid five. 
and this goes back. Okay, so now the next one. You can see we have a 10 on the Air Escort. And, oh my gosh, that one was a beautiful one. Um, so uh, we didn't need that. And now we have an 8, 9, 10 on the ground. And there we go. Okay, so this is going much, much better than the last one. I think I just had the worst luck on the planet with the last one. I really, really do. But anyways, uh, that's two more hits. And Raid 4 goes away. And I think that's the first lesson with solitaire games is quit. Know when to hold them and know when to fold them, right? So uh, folding it was the right idea. So there you go. There's a four. And yes, a game is more fun when you actually succeed every now and then. <laughs> so thank you uh, for your patience there. Okay, now this last one. Now this is a tricky one. I need, I'm getting an eight with the Canadian there. Andrew, this is all on you, mister. You got a pass with an eight. And there we go. We got a four. So Canada comes through for us again. Okay, so now this last one. This one is a six ground combat, and we need to pass that. And here's our card. <laughs> Shuffle. Shuffle all discards into the deck. This card counts as no event, and all of its resolution values are zero. <laughs> That was the luckiest draw ever. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna shuffle. <laughs> um, I couldn't have planned that any better. Uh, and uh, what we did, folks, is we did two damage on raid nine, which means we succeeded at all of our objectives on turn two. Um, now granted, that's still not on turn one, like I said, was impossible, but to pull it off on turn two, I'm quite impressed, in fact. I, and again, you just have to get this dead in OCA track up. Um, so is that really a single solution to a puzzle? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. Um, it means every time you play, you got to get that track up. Um, so why not just have a game where you start with the track up? Um, but uh, with that being said, my options are getting better. I do feel like I'm making more potential choices. Um, so, and all solitaire games need to be tense. So I'm not complaining about how tense it gets. I just wanna feel like I'm a part of it. Um, and so anyways, I'm at 52 minutes. Should I keep going? We got the ground combat phase. Yeah, let's keep going. Um, so let's do ground combat here. And this guy up here at the top, you can see, is a 7 versus a 3. That's not a good day for us. So what do we get? Uh, we got a uh, 2, so we definitely lose. He moves forward, and um, 2 more points for the bad guys. All right, now it's an 8 versus an 8, and we drew a 2. So we did pound him back down to a 7, although he's going to go right back up to 8. But the fact that we have an eight means that that line's gonna be pretty solid. And that's the thing. If you can get one of these up to eight, he's gonna hold his own for a long time. It's gonna take the most unlucky roll ever, or draw, uh, to make it uh, not happen. Here's an eight versus a four, but this is why I wanted to do the mission. This is where the mission actually helped us. We're adding four, so we actually have an eight versus an eight. And then we drew a one, which is crappy, but that's enough to beat him down one, and this did its job. Our air raid actually did a job. <laughs> All right, this is an awful situation, seven versus three, and we drew a five. Oh my gosh, that made us an eight, so this guy got knocked down to a six. Uh, this next one should be an auto pass. Oh, we barely passed. Uh, we knock him down to a three, and then this last one is a seven versus a three, but we did add two. And we draw one, which is not enough, because three, four, five, six, we still failed. And this guy does move forward, even with our hits. And uh, we are in trouble, because this is automatic points for him if he gets to the end. Um, so just two, four, yep, he has six points, like he's supposed to. Okay, so um, that's the ground combat phase. 
Now we go to the reinforcement phase, and of course they're getting reinforced everywhere. Uh, this is a three. It shouldn't matter. He's already at an eight. Uh, next one is a three, so he goes up to eight. Next one is a three, so he goes up to an eight. And the next one is a three, so he goes up to an eight. And the next one is a three, so he goes up to a six. And the last one is a one, and it doesn't matter, he still goes up to an eight. So uh, all but one are at eight. And then we draw their new cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six for them. And then one for us. We get eight NATO reinforcements. That was probably the best card ever. I, I think there might be a nine out there, but eight is sweet. Okay, I think we have to put six here because we don't want him to take the final one, even though this isn't the end of the world, but he's going to score a lot of points if we let him have it because he gets a point every round that he's at the final spot uh, up until turn six. So that's uh, one, two, three. That's four points we'd be giving him. So I do think I need to spend six here, unfortunately, and that puts us to eight, but that leaves me with only two more points left. So I would love to put it here, but he, this is a lost cause. This one's already at an eight. And then this one, I can put it up to a five, but I don't know if a five is going to be enough. I mean, I guess we can support it with some Kaz. This one, we can put up to a six and he's going to be able to hold his own. And maybe that's worth it. So let's at least get somebody to hold their own. So they can hold their own, they can hold their own, and they can hold their own. And then we have, this one's a lost cause. And then maybe we can help these other two. I don't know, this, this is gonna be really hard. Very hard. We're gonna need some card luck. Uh, even with the, the very large reinforcements, it was not enough. Okay, so now we gotta draw an event. And we got no effect. So I'm okay with that. Okay, next is the research points. Um, oh, I forgot. We succeeded at both of our missions. So we get two research points for this one. One, two. And then we get uh, five research points for that one. Holy cow, one, two, three, four, five. And then right there, one Warsaw Pact retreat in Sector Charlie and a retreat in Sector Foxtrot. So now I gotta look at these again, because I think we said that Foxtrot was a lost cause. Uh, remember, we lost this one, and we would not have. So I need to pause the video and, and, and retract this. Um, this guy was here, of course, and we had a blue here. Remember, we lost the battle, because even though we had two hits, it wasn't enough. I think it was, we had a three, and I don't remember what his number was. I think it was a six or a seven or something like that. The point is, because we succeeded at these objectives, they took damage. And, and that's what we were supposed to uh, resolve here. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video and fix both of these and then I'll explain to you what happened. Uh, so anyways, thank you for watching, stay awesome.